Hi, I'm Clement Nowak and I help companies create amazing business documents and overcome the output management challenges in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. And my main role at Decentric is Partner Channel Manager and I'm still heavily involved in our software architecture and development. We at Decentric are thrilled to be part of another excellent DynamicsCon event. So thank you for having us DynamicsCon. And today I will show you how you can print your business documents from D365 FNO to SharePoint with metadata. And by doing so, you can create a central repository of all your financial documents that can be used for document search, analytics, integrations, archiving, and workflows by everyone in your organization. And not just the people using D365 FNO. And the best part is that all the features I'm going to show you were requested by our customers. So we listened and we delivered. And I hope you like what I'm going to show you today. Let's now fly to our agenda and see how. First, I will shortly introduce the Centric and why we should store our financial documents to SharePoint with metadata. And then I hope that you are eager to see the demo, where I will show you how easy it is to create a sales invoice, register it in D365 FNO without any deployment, send it to your clients, and at the same time, store them to SharePoint. And the same scenario can be applied to any business document. I will also show you how to use our SharePoint APIs to achieve the same scenario on vendor invoices. And at the end, we will make a review of the presented material and I will announce the next steps for those among you who would like to learn more about the Centric or would even like to give it a test run. But before I continue, there is something important I want to announce. After the conference, we are giving away an iPhone 12. So how cool is that? And if you wish to be the lucky winner, here is what you need to do. Watch and listen carefully as the answers to the questions will be revealed during this session. Always look for the light bulb sign that now appears on the right. We have already posted a link to our giveaway entry page in the session's chat window. The link is also available at our virtual booth. Follow this link where you can leave your contact information and take a short quiz. Don't worry, there are only four simple questions and if you carefully follow our session, they will be a no-brainer. And the lucky winner will be announced after the conference on our social media. So here at Docentric, we are specialized in reporting and document automation. Our mission is to create better reports and offer a complete Dynamics 365 for finance and operation reporting solution. When it comes to creating, printing, emailing, distributing, and archiving business documents, thousands of end users, consultants, and developers worldwide have come to rely upon the Centric. We are there for over a decade and provide you with an efficient report designer for your business documents and solve the limited document distribution features in the standard solution. And today I will show you the power of our product called the Centric AX. And for those of you who don't know us yet, we offer also a free edition. So check out our webpage and see what is there for free and give it a try. With the Centric Designer, you can speed up your report design up to 10 times. So you can sit and relax as our Mary is doing now on the screen. And instead of creating your reports for days, you can be done in a matter of hours. And this is possible because the Centric Designer uses familiar Microsoft Word with our enhancements. And the best part of all is that everyone in your organization can be included in the report design. You can prepare a nice professional looking blueprint that can also be used as your business document specification. And once everyone in your team is satisfied with the blueprint, you can then convert it to the Centric Design by simply replacing static text with fields map to D365 data sources. And while you're doing that, you can instantly see the result. Let's now look how the Centric prints out your reports in D365. First, we start with the Centric Designer. We create the Centric Designs and we store them either in SharePoint, Azure Blob Storage or internally in D365 if it's on-premises. And for the Centric Report Design, you don't need to be a developer. So we empower key users, functional consultants, or basically anyone in your organization who knows the business process. Once we have a Decentric design ready, 
You just upload it to D365, and then we start the report execution. Our solution sits on top of SSRS pipeline and reuses everything that is already there, so you won't know the difference and enjoy the same experience. Then we fetch the data, either from the standard SSRS or electronic reporting data sources, and pass the data to the, the Centric document generator along with the Centric designs. And once the final document is generated, you can send it through our advanced output management to the desired print destinations, such as print archive, email, screen, printer, or to any other application. And it doesn't matter if the document is being generated in the standard way using SSRS or using the Centric. And the best thing here is that most of the output management features are completely free. So the main goal of the Centric's advanced output management is to enable you to automate the document distribution across various print destinations and make them dynamic based on your data. Today we will focus on SharePoint integration, and if you want to store documents in a structured way, you can do this with the Centric Free Edition. But if you want to store documents with structured metadata, you will need the full edition. And why would you send structured metadata with your documents to SharePoint, you might ask? So although we want to explore space and find the best opportunities out there, we still want to save the planet. And the same can be applied to processes in each organization where we need access to our business documents. So sending and storing documents in an electronic way to be used by everyone and anywhere in the process, and not just by people who have access to D365, can be more efficient and is helping us to keep the planet green. And by storing documents with structured metadata in SharePoint, we will be able to create legally bound long-term archive and stop printing documents. You can save money on D365 licenses if you compare it to the cost of SharePoint storage. Then there's the ability to create BI analytics over the structured metadata in SharePoint. And of course, you can use them in other applications, services, or workflows. And now it's time to see everything in action. So I'll now switch to my demo machine. First, let's start with the Centric Designer. I have already prepared a nice looking blueprint of the sales invoice. And once the Centric Designer is installed, you will receive a new ribbon in Microsoft Word called the Centric AX. And in order to convert it to the Centric Design, we need to point it to a data source file or as we call it, a DDSP file. And this file is generated from D365 once the Centric is installed there, uh, and you print out any of the sales invoice. And the file actually contains data schema, sample data, and also all the translations if you want to create a multilingual report. So I will select and open it. And now we can start converting this to the Centric design. So what we need to do here is to select the text, use our tagging elements, and in this case, the field tagging element, and then map it to the data source. So in this case, to the sales invoice header, to the buyer name. And as you can see here, we have the binding path, which points now to the data source. And we just confirm this, and that's it. So let's do the same for the buyer address. and also for the invoice ID. And that's it. And now let's bring also the legal entity logo. So I will remove this one because it's a static one. And then again, going to the Centric X ribbon using the image tagging element and selecting from where the logo will come from and make it a little bit smaller and that's it. So let's now check what we have done. We now see that we have the logo of the legal entity, we have the bar name, the address, and also the invoice ID. Great. But uh, what if we could speed up the process and we could instantly see what's going on on the design? So we can enable our live preview feature, which shows us instantly the changes on the document as we're changing something on the design.
And this also shows us how quickly our engine can generate your business documents. So let's now convert the table. So I will remove the last two rows because I just need the first one. And then I will select the whole row and use the list tagging element and point it to the sales invoice lines. And as we can see, we are already getting uh, our table with all the sales invoice lines, but the table is still static. So let's now also convert the values in the row. So I will select again the product name and notice that now we are already in the data context of the sales invoice lines. So we just point it to the name, to the item ID, and let's quickly do the same for all the other columns. So in this case, the quantity. And now we need to convert the unit price. So this is the sales price and also the line amount. So the line amount. Great. So we have now all the values in our table. But if you noticed, all the numbers and amounts are not formatted correctly. So how do we do this now? It's quite simple. We just select the correct tagging element and we provide it with a format string. And in this case, let's say we want to have two decimal places for all the numbers and amounts. And that's it. Great. Those are all the basic stuff. But what if we want to uh, add some conditional element? So let's now add an additional row, for example, and let's make this row in a different color. And let's say that we want to show text in if we have a special delivery term. So I will write inside some special text. So hello, my new friends, friends from DynamicsCon. And I will now select this area. And now I will use the if tagging element to make this row conditional. And you can make conditional rows, tables, uh, objects, uh, even whole document sections. So now I will select the MSR delivery terms and I will write here an expression. So they should be equal to FOB. And we can also open our XPath editor where we can also see the data source. We can also see all the operators we can use and we can also use all the functions that we have here available to manipulate strings, dates, numbers, and so on. And let's now confirm this. And we can see that this conditional row is not appearing on the document. And let's now go to the testing phase. So let's say that we have finished with the design, but uh, we still need to test if everything is working. So how do we do that? We can just simply select the, the data source. And if you remember at the beginning, when we selected the data source file, I mentioned that we have also here the sample data. So we can now play around with that sample data. And I have just opened our window where we show uh, the sample data. And now I will just find the MSR delivery terms field and change the value to FOB to see if that condition is working. And yes, it's appearing. In the same way, we can test for all the other scenarios. So there is no need to go back to D365 and prepare all the sample data for all the scenarios. But we can just simply open again. And let's say, for example, we want to check uh, how the table is being spread across pages. We just copy a few times the sales invoice lines and we get multiple mid-range speakers. And we see that the table is being spread across pages as expected. So we always have the header line. Okay, great. So as you saw, it's quite simple. It's uh, also really efficient and the designer really works fast because it's working in offline mode. And if you wish, you, you could also send this design to your colleagues and they can continue working on it without any connection to D365. 
Great, so now we have everything ready and let's now close this design. And let's go to D365 and register it. So if I open now my D365 FO environment and go to the Centric workspace, and here we now need to go to our report setup. So here we have all the registration of all the report setups for which the Centric will kick in in the pipeline. And I have already done this for the sales invoice. So I will just open the sales invoice report. And then we need to register the template. So this report design that we have just created in this list. So let's add a new one. and name it Sales Invoice Dynamics Con Report and go back and then upload that template file and we will store it to Azure Blob Storage. So let's now upload that file. Great. And let's now see how the existing report looks like. So let's run it first. So great. And now let's switch to the one that we have just created. So I will mark it as a default one. And this means that once we print it on the screen, it will always use the one that is marked as a default one. So if I do this again, we will see that this design will now appear. Great. And it seems that this invoice also has the delivery terms FOB because this conditional area is now appearing on the document. So now let's move and send this report to our customers and at the same time send it to SharePoint. Okay, before we start digging into print destinations, we need to do a few things. First of all, we need to define additional document types because I will show you different scenarios on how you can store documents to SharePoint. And in this case, I have already prepared a few document types and we need them if we want to store documents to print archive and also if we want to attach documents to the sales invoice journal lines. And that's why I have here two document types for the sales invoice. So the first one is the sales invoice print archive. And I have defined here that I want to store them to the sales invoice print archive document library. And the second one is the sales invoice attachments. And again, storing them to a different location. Then we need to define the metadata mapping. So which fields from the data source will be mapped to which fields in SharePoint. And we do this here under the SharePoint settings. And also here I have defined three uh, entries. Why, why three? Because uh, I have three different destinations. One for uh, the well-organized document structure of our documents. The second one, if we want to uh, simultaneously print all the documents to the uh, invoice journal attachments. And in this case, we can also then use them later on uh, for other operations in our processes. So for example, you can attach an overdue invoice to your collection letters. Or if you want to have everything stored in the print archive, and of course, once you have them stored there, you can access them from there either from uh, D365 or from SharePoint. We define here the SharePoint Scientist library, which will be used. And then we also define in which case this entry will be used. So uh, if we're just saving to SharePoint or we will save to attachment or to the print archive. And then we add to the list all the fields. So we select them. Here we get the available fields on SharePoint and we then move them to the right to the selected part and confirm them. So I have already done this. And then we map those SharePoint metadata to the data coming from D365. And in this case, we are using placeholders. And what are placeholders? Placeholders are some kind of variables which will be replaced in the runtime with an actual value from the data source. And that's it. So we have finished with the 
preparation on how the metadata will be sent along uh, our documents. And now let's go to the print management where we actually define the print destinations and where the documents will go. And in this case, I have already prepared two print management settings. First one is the original and let's see what we have done here. So uh, here I have the file print destination setup. And again, I'm using placeholders to, to dynamically name the generated output file. I will store them in PDF and I will send them to SharePoint on a dynamic path where I will organize them by the customer account and then also by the year when the sales invoice was issued. And if the folders don't exist in the document library, the Centric will create them for me. Then we will at the same time also store this document to attachments. And as you can see, I have selected the document type that I was showing earlier, and I want to store those documents to the invoice journal. And if, the, if it exists, I will replace the existing one. And at the same time, we will also save them to the print archive. So those are the three different scenarios that you can use. And then we will also email our sales invoice to the customer. So that's why I have another configuration here. And now we see the email print destination. So here I'm again using our placeholders to dynamically define subject. The same for the email body. So we can also define a nice looking rich text email body to make it dynamic by using placeholders. And I will also attach an additional attachment. So in this case, our terms and conditions. Okay, that's it. So now let's check how this looks like. So if I now print out this report by using print management, we will see that now this document is being sent to the customers. The customer already received uh, an email. And if I click on the email, we can now see that we here have a nice looking email body. We have the sales invoice and we also have uh, two attachments. So the customer invoice and the terms and conditions. And if I now quickly open them, so those are the terms and conditions that were fetched for legal entity attachments, but you can also attach them from other attachments. Uh, and this is now the customer invoice and the customer invoice now requires me to provide the password. Why is that? Because the Sentry can also encrypt documents and this way only the recipient, if he knows the password, can open this document. And we already agreed with the customer what will be the password. And in this case, I used the uh, invoice ID. So the passwords can be dynamic and can be fetched from the data source. I will now open this and we now see our document. And we also see that the document is being signed. So we can always see who issued the document and if somebody tampered with the document. So in this case, we are safe and we can also pay this document. Okay, great. And now let's go to SharePoint and see what's going on there. So in SharePoint, I have prepared a SharePoint site and here we have three sales invoice document libraries. So first one is the sales invoice where I have organized documents first by our customer account. And this one is the new one. So this US 003 forest wholesale. And inside we have the year when the sales invoice was issued. And then we have the sales invoice. And we see here also all the metadata which can be used now for search, for filtering. And of course, we can also export all those documents here to Excel to create analytics. So if I just quickly open it, we see that this is the exactly the same document. And the same happened also to other two libraries. So if we now check here, we see that the same document was sent to the print archive. So this is this one. Okay, and this one. So this is now being stored to the attachments. Great, okay, let's now move to the vendor invoices. So in the case of vendor invoices, 
you will usually, if you want to automate everything, store those vendor invoices in D365 from some kind of account payable solution. So that means that before then you will capture the document, uh, create an OCR and get the entries here in the pending invoices. But the data still can be changed and the data in some cases is not accurate. And also some data is completed through the workflow once you're approving the invoices. So let's simulate now this scenario. So I will open one of the pending invoices and I will now add an attachment. So again, here I have defined a new document type vendor invoice. And this document type, if I just quickly go to document types, has a docu action class attach file with metadata and this class will actually send the metadata uh, when we are attaching the file to this document library and let's now add this attachment and we have them here so let's select the vendor invoice this one and let's also take the vendor invoice id great so let's check what happened now in sharepoint so we have the new vendor invoice and as we can see the vendor invoice id is missing and the invoice date but all the rest of the data are there why is that because we didn't receive this information when the vendor invoice was registered and now let's fix this before we will post so let's say that we are moving to the approval process and we complete the data and before the posting all the data needs to be there to ensure the data quality and the same we want also in SharePoint. So that means that once the document is being posted, we want to update metadata inside SharePoint. And this is exactly what happened now. So if we go now to SharePoint, uh, we will in a few moments see the updated metadata and yeah, it's appearing great. So how did I do that? I used our SharePoint APIs to create a DocuAction class so I won't go so much into the details. And then I also extended the form letter service where the posting happens because we have two steps where we are saving documents to SharePoint. The first one is once we attach the file and this will happen through the docu action file with metadata. And then we have extended also, we have uh, subscribed to a change attachment SharePoint metadata a delegate in which we provide all the metadata we want to store along with the document and of course for the posting part we also need to ensure that once the document is posted we also want to update the metadata and we did this all these scenarios by using the SharePoint API uh, and uh, for more details please contact us and we can share with you also this example that I just showed you today. Okay, so that's more or less everything that I wanted to show you today. I hope you have already registered for our giveaway. If not, there is still time till the end of the DynamicsCon event and you just might be lucky and win an iPhone 12. Let's now summarize what we have learned so far. I have shown you how you can design professional looking business documents such as invoices or orders fast using only Microsoft Word and spend instead of days only hours. Then we stored them from D365 FNO to SharePoint with structured metadata. And while doing that, we quickly looked at other advanced output management features such as emailing. As always, all good things come to an end. If you have liked what you saw, contact us and try everything I showed you today and much more for yourself. You will not be disappointed. Thank you for listening and have a lovely day.